Hey gang, what's up? Alan Bishop with the One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute, your source for all things distillation related, whether it be legal distilling, home distilling, moonshining, or just a general interest in distilling. It's all the same to me. It's an art form that I love, put a lot of time and passion into, and uh, I also enjoy the fruits of my labor. So this evening, drinking a little bit of my own uh, my own medicine, a little Lee W. Sinclair four grain bourbon, 60% corn, 17% wheat, 13% oats, and 10% caramel malt, double pot distilled, no chill filtration. Uh, 53 gallon barrels and larger, number two char, medium plus toast. I'm really good at that sales pitch, so I thought I'd throw it in there. Anyways, uh, sitting down to do a little short session. I got a couple questions this evening I wanted to get to and uh, put on the channel. I also wanted to thank you guys for continuing to subscribe to the channel and um, sharing the channel <clears throat> wherever you guys are sharing it because it's working. I mean, we're almost up to, I think when I looked earlier, almost up to 1,300 subscribers, which honestly, I didn't think there'd be that many people that interested in the depths of distillation that I tend to go into. So greatly appreciate that. Lots of cool stuff coming up. Uh, we have not forgotten about the uh, the competition, the giveaway that we talked about in previous videos. Uh, we're asking you guys for some challenging recipes. I've got some really great recipes in. Uh, I'll probably announce the winner of that maybe somewhere right around Christmas, more than likely. Uh, the problem with some of the recipes I have is some of the recipes are fantastic, but they rely on ingredients that I can't get right now because they're out of season. Nonetheless, they are winners in their, of their own accord, and they may even win the competition, even if I can't make those uh, particular products until the summertime, one way or the other. Uh, so I'm super excited about getting that on the channel and sharing that with you guys, because you guys really stepped up to the plate with that. We also still intend to get back into the divided distillation stuff with the little uh, divided distillation still that Mark Lipton sent us. That is on the agenda. It is coming. It's just a matter of time. And we're going to get into uh, Rick Gibson's Tennessee Thumper still. I'm getting into Wayne Herbert's um, uh, Shocker Reflux Condenser Deflamator, whatever you'd like to call it, here very, very shortly. We're going to do a deep dive on that deal and back to the 13 stills one piece at a time distilling institute crossover still the black forest edition that jason wade harrell uh created we're going to be doing a project with the gin basket on that shortly so very long list of things to get to um limited time sometimes to get to it but we will get to all of it it just takes time sometimes to get there so <clears throat> today we had a question and i still have some sinus stuff going on part of it's my own doing because i smoke you guys know that but whatever uh, so today we have a question. I cannot remember who asked it. I think that it was in the comments section of YouTube. As always, if you guys have questions, reach out to me. Bishopshomegrown at gmail.com. YouTube comments below. Social media. TheAlchemistCabinet.com for all the links to everything else I do, including if you have ghosts, you have everything, podcast, distillers talk, podcast, etc. Anyways, the question today was about shell and tube condensers versus a traditional worm or a serpentine condenser. Uh, this is something I feel like I can comment on. I've used... Uh, multiple types of condensers, double walled condensers, worm condensers, shell and tube condensers, Gatlin gun condensers, you name it. Even an air cooled condenser if you watch the clay pot still video. Uh, so the traditional take on this uh, serpentine versus uh, shell and tube or Gatlin gun style condenser uh, it comes from scotch whiskey mostly. Uh, so you will find that a lot of scotch distilleries, especially single malt distilleries that do double pot still distillation by law, they have to for Scottish single malt. Uh, they prefer slightly different styles of stills or slightly different styles of condensation because that greatly affects the spirit that they are producing. So one of the things that you'll find is that spirits, uh, specifically from Scotland, uh, those Scottish single malt spirits, uh, that have a heavier body. Uh, uh, they, it's almost described as a, a meatier aroma uh, or flavor or even somewhat vegetative, right? A lot of those spirits are using the worm. The spirits that have a fruitier aroma and flavor profile. A lot of those are using a Gatlin gun slash shell and tube condenser. And these, bear in mind, these are both examples of copper condensers where stainless steel is not part of this equation, but we'll get there momentarily. Now, the rationale behind that is because that Gatlin gun condenser, and we're not talking like a LeBeg, like a, you know, a single shell and tube. We're talking multiple shell and tube, one shell, multiple tubes. You have more copper surface area. And because it takes a little while for that vapor to come over and actually condense, that vapor is actually in contact with copper a little longer. It's pulling out some more sulfates, right, from the fermentation. Some of the same things that you don't want in fermentation, such as H2S and S SO2. H2S and SO2. I'll get it out in a minute. Anyways, the worm, on the other hand, isn't pulling as much of that stuff out. So it makes for a heavier, meatier heavier bodied spirit it's a little dirtier spirit and it's done on purpose because there's not as much surface area in that worm 
This can be applied to you guys as home distillers as well at home. What do you want, right? Do you want a, a white moonshine that you want it to be fruity and floral? Me, I would go with a copper shell and tube condenser, a Gatlin gun condenser. Do you want a, a traditional heavy bodied corn whiskey moonshine? I'd go with that traditional serpentine. It all just depends on what you want. Now, when it comes to stainless steel, obviously that changes stuff up because stainless does not have the same reaction chemically that copper does. So depending on what style of distillation you're doing, whether you're doing, you know, single pass with uh, four plates or you're doing, uh, you know, double pot still or you're doing pot and thumper, that may or may not affect the quality because you may or may not be getting some more of that copper conversation. My opinion is that it doesn't, on the condenser side, greatly affect most sugar shines or most grain whiskeys that aren't malts because you don't have the amount of nitrogen, you don't have the amount of SO2, the amount of H2S. The other part of this goes back to the yeast conversation we had before. If you've got a lot of H2S, you can always use a low aldehyde producing yeast strain. So the interesting thing about H2S is that it sticks to aldehydes in particular and comes across during distillation. So if you've got a stainless steel uh, Lebed condenser, for example, or a stainless steel Gatlin gun condenser, maybe lean into a yeast that doesn't produce nearly as much acetyl aldehyde and you don't have to worry so much about those sulfurous compounds coming across even though that condenser only has a mild effect at best in my opinion on most all grain whiskeys that are not single malt and most sugar shines that you are going to run um, for me i've got like i said lebegs i've got double walls i've got serpentines i've got gatlin guns all that stuff uh, i love my dr gratis gatlin gun condenser that is the most efficient condenser that i have I love all my worms that I have, um, and I love my Lebecs, but I love them all for different reasons. So the Gatlin gun is because it's super efficient and it's plug and play, right? It's all quick connect, quick release. So I plug that thing right in. It's ready to go off any water system that has a pump on it. It's good to go. I love my worms because I love the traditional feel of it. I love the traditional feel of being a you know pot still distiller running an actual serpentine or a worm for my distillation. Uh, I like the products I get out of it. When I'm running a pot and a thumper, I'm running a worm. If I'm running double pot still, 90% of the time, I'm running a worm. I love my Lebegs for my Highline distillations. Lebegs are pretty well inefficient a lot of times. Uh, most people don't give them enough surface area to actually condense in the length that the Lebeg is before the steam gets to the end of the Lebeg and you haven't condensed everything down. <coughs> it can lead to some dangerous situations. But, for example, if you're running Wayne Herbert Shocker, uh, the deflamator, I smile every time I say it, the deflamator that Wayne has made that he sent to me that we've got the shorts up on the channel that you can check out, uh, and you're running reflux, for example, Lebeg is perfect for that. If you're running plates, right, Lebeg is perfect for that because you're not going to be running real fast anyways because everything's going to be slowing down because you're refluxing some amount of that volume of alcohol back down into the pot. So Lebeg works out perfect for that. And instances where I'm, uh, you know, running off of a, a controlled water source. So, for example, I have uh, in, in a particular building, I have a freezer that has been flex sealed on the inside that I can freeze for about 24 hours. It'll freeze about three quarters of the way over, but still have enough water to get my pump into. Uh, that is cool enough and cold enough that I can run the Lebeg off of it easily. I can also run the Gatlin gun condenser off of it. But the Gatlin gun will also run off of a water hose. It'll run off of a pond pump. <clears throat> and of course with the worms, I tend to like to put my water into the bottom of the worm, uh, cold water in the bottom, hot water out the top. That's the way it was traditionally done, not the way that you see most moonshiners do it nowadays. Um, you know, for me that's water hose territory right there, you know, and large body of water where you're not worried about wasting water necessarily. So I hope that cleared some of that up for you. Probably a long rambling video and I'm like that sometimes. And also I apologize for the <clears throat> somewhat boring domestic background but i am uh confined to the room at the moment because i'm getting ready to do a podcast about a blended uh craft whiskey that we contributed some of our lee sinclair bourbon whiskey from spirits of french lick to and uh so i don't want to get too far away from the computer and the whole setup for the podcast and all that stuff but as always guys reach out to me i love y'all uh have happy holidays merry christmas whatever you celebrate i don't care one way or the other but have a great time and for me merry christmas and happy new year's there'll be more videos between here and then, I'm sure. But catch y'all later.